Good morning. God bless you. Come on in the room. We are live here at Abundance Season getting ready, uh, making it to day seven of our fast. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in the room. Hallelujah. Come on in the room. In Jesus' name. Come on in. Come on in. Share this video if you can. Amen. Hallelujah. I tried to tag some of you, but it's saying I can't tag you. I'm not sure why. Um, but we're going to be talking about yoke breaking praise this morning. Come on in the room. God bless you. God bless you and keep you. We just thank God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, clap those hands and just lift those hands this morning and let God know that he is an amazing God. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. God is good. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Thank you. Come on in the room. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hopefully I shared this um, service with someone. I posted on their um on their Facebook page, amen, or send them a link by email, send it to their phone, send it by text, whatever you need to do, but let somebody know this morning uh, that there's some yoke breaking going on, hallelujah, uh, so I am just so thankful right now that some yokes are about to be broken in the name of Jesus, I don't know about you, but I've been excited about this year, since September 16 and you know even when we look to our left and to our right and we see things that just don't look like the promise of God rest assured that God is in it and so I want to make sure that you know the power you have by your Ruah by your shout that this is the year 5781 of the controlled open mouth come on let's control some things control our thoughts, control what God is about to do for us when we begin to walk in what he has promised us. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Some yoke breaking. I want to make sure you understand how your praise will break some strongholds, how you're anointing. So one of the questions, if you read the description, I asked you on a scale from one to 10, how would you rate your praise? How would you rate your praise? Do you turn it on and off? What do you do in order to stay in a level of praise where Satan can't even show his ugly head? You can't even have visions of what he's trying to do. I'm telling you, I want to give you some instructions today regarding your praise. Um, uh, if you don't have my book, just want to make sure uh, what I'm telling you, you can have it in your home. Uh, this is called uh, 12 Weapons of Spiritual Warfare. And I don't play with the devil. I cast those demons out of my life, out of my house. In the name of Jesus. I want to make sure when I talk about casting out demons, uh, you don't call out a person's name. You don't cast out a person. You cast out the stronghold, the strong man. You bind the strong man. But today, uh, there's 12 weapons. I want to talk about the second weapon which is praise. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the power of your might. Lord, we're in the 16th day, I believe. We're already past two weeks in the new year. And in uh, uh, January, the first month and the sixth day, uh, the number six is uh, the number for man. That our capital was attacked the United States of America for the first time in over 200 years because people don't want to move forward. They want to move back. I know what the scripture says. 
and we have to obey the laws of the land except when they are not in agreement with God's laws. So there's a lot of things that people do that are not in agreement with God's laws. Adultery is not in agreement with God's laws, as well as homosexuality. I get that. But the key is we can't stop people from doing what they want to do in the dark. But we can try to make laws for them to follow um, things to re reduce hatred and divide. Okay, so uh, we, we can't uh, love babies but hate uh, people of color. It, that's not of God. God wants us to love everyone, including our enemies. So we've got to get better at our praise and breaking yokes, meaning that we will confuse the enemy in our house like we've never done before. Amen. So let us get into the word regarding praise. Hallelujah. Let's get into this word. Hallelujah. One of the things, the first weapon is truth. And I'm not talking about uh, truth this morning, but the truth will make you free. Um, we are on a first fruits fast. I hope you've had some suddenly moments, but the truth will make you free. And so in order to go to this step, because people always say, and especially in this book, why don't you have being saved first? Or why don't you have prayer first? Because you need to know who you're praying to. So you have to have truth in you before you can pray. But we're in a first fruits fast and we're on day seven starting today. Um, first fruits mean that everything you do first is to honor God. And I want to make sure you know, I pray that all of you that are following uh, this fast have followed all the instructions. So you can go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So this is a fruit. And we've been talking about first fruit since the 10th. And we've got 14 more days to go. Let us even look at Psalms. Psalms chapter 8, verse 2, are called to overcome the devil and his demons and all their works using praise as a mighty God-ordained weapon for destruction of their plans and works. Praise is different than prayer. That's where we're giving God praise and honor and glory. So I want you to know um, praise releases the presence of God. That when you uh, begin to walk around your house, uh, sing a song of praise. And the old saints used to sing when they walked, especially the old grandmothers and great grandmothers would kind of walk slowly and sing. Mm -hmm. And then you had the deacons at the front altar. When I was growing up, they would have a hum and they would just hum as they would pray. And so we need to give a sacrifice a sacrificial praise. That means that when you don't feel like praising, that you do it anyway. And then as you begin to praise them before you know it, that the anointing comes on you to break some yokes. We need to be in the presence, excuse me, the presence of God through praise. Because uh, when you do that, praise releases the presence of God in a way that Satan must flee. In accordance with James chapter 4, verse 7, I submit myself to God, therefore, Satan, you must flee. So you're submitting, you're in a spirit of submission and humility and praise because you're not talking about yourself. You're not talking about anybody but God and how great thou art. So we need to know that when we praise God more, we will have far less interference from demonic powers in our lives. Let's look at America. America, we need to pray more. We need to give God praise for one of the greatest countries in the world. But instead we have, we're infighting just like families are infighting. So family of America, we need to get it together. Why is praise indispensable in spiritual warfare? Let me tell you, 
one may become discouraged without praise and the evil one and his activities become such an overwhelming reality that we forget about God. We forget about the power of God. We forget about what he can do. Come on, somebody. I need an amen. Send an emoji. And, and the question of the day was, how do you rate your praise? Oh, I know that I, if I rated my praise today, I'm at about a seven. I need to get at a 10. And if it was a thermometer, I need it to be explosive. Amen, amen, amen. And why is it hard to get into praise right now? It's hard to get into praise right now because you're in your house. And if you're not used to, and what I'm finding, especially with members, you're not used to praying in your house. You're not used to walking around. You're not used to singing. So you're used to the assembly. And that's good because God says, do not forsake the assembly. We're assembling right now virtually, but we got to still learn how to praise in our house. We need to still learn how to, to make sure that we sing hymns and give all honor and glory to God. When we wake up in the morning and we can inhale and exhale, we know that God did it. Hallelujah. So we need to know how praise drives the enemy away. Praise drives the enemy away. It, it, it drives away doubt. Right now, we're doubting what's going to happen. You know, look at the seeds of evil and the seeds of doubt about the election and other things that you've even had doubt on regarding your job. And so when we begin to praise, God will reveal the secrets and the mysteries of God so that we will know the truth against the father of lies. We thank you, oh Father God, because with that, it drives away doubt, fear, and excessive awareness of the evil one. You know, I have people that may have visions or or that have uh, the ability to see things um, and where things are manifesting. The key is when a lot of manifestation of evil is happening, that is not a good thing, even if it's a vision. I always ask them, how much of, of God do you see or uh, angelic things do you see? And normally it's, there's none. So we may, excuse me, we need to make sure that praise is a priority over demonic influence or demonic visions. Amen. Um, we must keep our eyes on Jesus and glorify him. We must and we shall exalt the Savior in Jesus' name. How praise frees the spirit and brings us into contact with the greatness and majesty of God. We need to know um, why Satan and demons just hate hearing people uh, praise God, especially when they do so from a pure heart. What does that mean? That means that, that your heart is pure and ready for everything. You truly um, decrease the things of this world so you can get to your next level, your next level of praise. Amen. So the devil doesn't like this. And so when you begin to get into uh, praise, we need to know what a pure heart is. Our Bible is the ultimate source for information ordained by God to minister to us on every situation. So that's when you begin to hear things in the natural. If you know the word of God, that's why the second day of our prayer night was uh reading his word and understanding his word because prayer uh, the word is a weapon too but before you can understand the words you have to understand the truth and to allow God to come on the scene you have to adore him and so just like you adore your family just like you adore a baby just like you give praise to uh, those that you see uh, you know oh uh, Look at you. You're so wonderful. That's what we need to God. I know I'm kind of uh, uh, making it simple, but I want to make sure that you know it's simple to get in the praise. Hallelujah. So in Psalms chapter 8, verse 2, it says, Out of the mouth of infants and suck suckling, thou host perfect praise. Hallelujah. Because of thy enemies, that thou mayest destroy the enemy and the avenger. We must make our praise glorious to the one true and living mighty God. Somebody say, I want to make my praise glorious, glorious praise. Come on, somebody, begin to shout in your house and then give me an uh, emoji showing that you're making 
the praise glorious hallelujah good morning uh sister angela sister lisa uh dr chisholm it's good to see that nassau bahamas is out in the place i thank you god so we need to understand the power of praise uh how do we praise? So it's really simple because we can use our whole body to praise him. And when you use your whole body to praise God, I'm telling you, it confuses the enemy. The assignment that he had on your life, on your children, on your family, on your job, on your assignment for God as a minister, because ministers and intercessors are attacked. Once your children have given their life to Christ, that's where the devil wants to show up because He's like, oh, no, you're not going to another level. That's why you've heard the old cliche, a new level, new devils. It's because you're trying to get higher in Christ and the devil's trying to pull you down. So the devil knows your weakness because he sees your weakness in the flesh. And when you begin to praise him, he doesn't see weakness. He sees praise and he doesn't know what to do with that because God begins to inhabit amongst uh, the praise. And so the praise confuses the enemy because he didn't like praise. When he was in heaven, he wanted to be praised. That was Lucifer. And that's why he was kicked down out of heaven and a third of the angels because he wanted the praise for him. But God said, no, the praise is reserved for me. Hallelujah. And so we got to reserve the praise for God so that when uh, uh, the Shekinah glory, the presence of God come down in your house, it'll confuse the enemy. The enemy me cannot stay in the name of Jesus. So we have to give him a praise of thanksgiving. And I, I don't have time to go into one of the greatest battles and one of the greatest stories. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. But I want to give you this uh, particular scripture, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 17 through 22. And that's where King Jehoshaphat mastered praise. Tune in tomorrow for that because, oh, it, it, it didn't take much but oh my God, my God, <clears throat> when you begin to see what he did, you can do it too in your home. <clears throat> so Psalms chapter 100 verse 4 tells us, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thanksgiving, the Hebrew word for thanksgiving used in that verse and many others throughout the Old Testament is yada. Yada is the Hebrew word for praise. We can praise him with instruments in accordance with Psalms chapter 150 verses 3 through 5 states, praise him with the sound of a trumpet, praise him with the um, harp, praise him uh, with the tambourine, praise him with string instruments and organs, uh, praise him with loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. We can raise our hands. See, the Bible tells you to do that in uh, uh, several uh, scriptures. Psalms chapter 63, verse 4. Psalms 88, uh, verse 9. Psalms 134. I mean, there's so many Psalms that tells you to raise your hands. So why does your pastor have to tell you to raise your hands? Amen. So uh, uh, Bahamas, Dr. Chisholm, yes, you're in the house. Uh, humor us with the weather because right now it's snowing here in Dayton, Ohio. It's a beautiful snow, but at the same time, it's snowing here. And I know that you have tropical trees and fruits and vegetables just growing on the vine when you just ride down the road. And that is a beautiful thing. So, so the Bible tells us to lift our hands. And if you notice those that um, lead, uh, the praise leader in the church always say, let us lift our hands. Let us clap our hands when we enter the gates with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Because it's in the word of God. You know, the book of Psalms is a book of praise. So it tells us <clears throat> to raise our hands. The word of God tells us to clap our hands again in Psalms. You know, when you clap your hands, uh, you know, and the more you do it, it becomes automatic. And just to clap makes the devil mad because you're giving God praise. When you lift your hands, it's a way of surrender, of giving God praise. And then when you begin to open your mouth, hallelujah! Oh, it makes the devil mad. See, that was a ruah praise. 
And and so I, you know what? I think I can increase my praise to to nine after that shout. It's a ruah praise. So you've got to to be able to just just have praise in your belly, and it's not going to be fake because you know the power of praise. It's your weapon to to confuse the enemy. It's the way to get arguments out of your house. It's a way to get unity back into the body of Christ as well. Hallelujah. I see all of you online this morning giving God the glory. So so your ammunition uh, uh, against the enemy is praise, praising God, not with your fists, but having your hands open to God, not not with uh, arguments, but clapping, not with uh, uh, yelling at people, but giving a ruah shout unto God. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 how about the victory run, you know, or the victory walk where uh, back in the day we used to be able, well, and even before the ch- church is closed, we were able to walk around the sanctuary or take laps when we called it a victory rap, excuse me, a victory lap. So when you run, excuse me, when you when you run, you are showing the enemy that it is finished that you have the victory and you are running a race knowing that you have the victory. So when you see a prophetic run in the church, all of a sudden somebody just gets up and start running. They know that God has fixed it. You know, God is already on the throne so they can see in uh, the innocence of their spirit that God has done it because they know the circumstances that they're in. And so that victory lap is a prophetic lap saying, I've already got the victory. The devil is a lie. And I know that God is going to show up on my behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So some of y'all need to do a victory lap in your house right now. You haven't done a victory lap in a while. So get up and do a victory lap. All right. And then you see people in church. You don't even know uh, why, but all of a sudden they get up with a dance. They just dance it, and they have a dance in their heart, a dance in their body. And in the book of Acts chapter 3, Luke chapter 6, Psalms 150 and 2 Samuel, and I can keep going on and on about the dance, you know, where uh, God tells us to praise him by dancing and leaping. You should feel much authority when you begin to stomp in your dance. Uh, the, uh, God says that the devil is under our feet. So every time you allow your feet to hit the floor in praise, you're stumping on the devil's head. God says that you will tread on serpents. You better understand what the words are coming out of my mouth in the name of Jesus. Uh, yeah, walk around in a dance. Uh, walk around in a shout. Uh, walk around and clap your hands. Uh, walk around and raise your hands. Uh, walk around and know you got the victory. Prophesy in the prophetic with your praise. Clap those hands and give God praise. Uh, Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God wants us to praise because praise is going to silence your enemy in the perfect praise. Let's talk about praise silencing the enemy. Perfect praise, the strength which God has ordained us is perfect praise. Oh, my God. If you can just only hear that in the anointing. He says that he silenced your enemy in perfect praise. Woo! Perfect praise. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you shall have perfect praise. That's in Psalms 8, verse 2, and Matthew 20, 1 through 16. Recognize when God begins to talk about a certain subject over and over again, especially when he tells you that it's going to get you out of bondage. A bondage, it becomes an anointed praise, and the anointing breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. Praise can be um, spoken or sung. However, it works to silence the enemy. Praise in you is led by the Holy Spirit. It's like this warmth, this love that you have out of your belly that you can't help yourself but to praise. I've been in a room with over thousands of people, 5,000 people, and that word will hit me, and I may be the only one shouting, 
but I won't stop. Now that's when my praise is at a 10 because that means that when a room is silent, that only you can hear God, what a powerful way to show, to silence the enemy. And right now, most of us are in a room by yourself and not with thousands of people. And you get to practice your praise. You get to uh, begin to see the purpose of your praise. You begin to walk in your praise. You begin to see the anointing grow in your praise. Praise is just one of the powerful, powerful. When, when God showed me that it'll break yokes. See, I can't be angry and give God praise. I can't cuss somebody out and give God praise. I can't use curse words and praise God. See, it changes the atmosphere in the room. It changes the atmosphere. No matter how angry you may have been, God changes the atmosphere. Hallelujah, glory. Come on, there's a shift in the atmosphere right now. There's a shift in the atmosphere right now. Come on, flow into the Shagan, Shekinah glory show. Uh, flow into his presence right now. Come on and flow, come on and flow. Come on and flow, come on and flow. Come on and flow. On and flow. Let the presence of God manifest in your house this morning. Come on, let it. Let it manifest. Let it manifest in the name of Jesus. Let it manifest. So when we take praise seriously, you can get things out of your house, out of your job, at the root. See, saints of God, we've been praying for God to heal our land. He's healing it, just not the way you thought. That's the hard part. Because God is going to pluck it up at the root. If we've been praising God, we've been praying to God, we've been surrendering to God, he's going to show you what's ugly in our land and get rid of it. And with this pestilence that came, you're still here if you're able to see me. That means that we took God's word seriously in times of trouble. So we have to offer a sacrifice of praise. I'm going to share this with you. Because the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. That's why we glorify him. But I'm going to share this word. The enemy is seeking the church. You know, we have been engaged in warfare, but it's higher than ever. Because even the church is divided in what we think that's best for this country. And, and, and because of political reasons and for the the um, connection to power has been the fall of some. Uh, hallelujah. I see you, uh, uh, Dr. Chisholm. It's sunny. Thank you. Hallelujah. But the goal of the enemy to the church is to overpower. Think about that. The goal of the enemy is the overpower. We saw that last week, didn't we? Now, when I wrote this, I wrote this book in 2010. The goal is to overpower us. With a few exceptions, our enemies remain invisible to our eyes, but now, because we've been praying, they're so angry, they've allowed their ugly horns to show. And you actually saw horns last week. Come on, somebody. These demonic enemies seem to have various forms. And Paul uh, used a term to identify them, rulers and powers and uh, rulers and forces in dark places. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, which I've covered uh, several times. So God has the power to send various angels, excuse me, angels, which we don't call on. We call on God to send the power that he wants. The warring angels, the ministering angels, the healing angels, the angels of protection, the angels that go before us. But we don't send them. God does because God can show up on the scene all by himself. That's the Shekinah glory, the presence of God. Will you just praise him right now? Will you just lift his, your hands and praise him? 
will you glorify him right now? Will you show him that uh, you care? Show him that you love him. Show him that you adore him. Show him that you magnify him in your house, right where you are. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, Father God, we thank you. Oh, Father God, you're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. There's no one like you. We are in awe with you, oh, Father God. There shall be no other God before you. We remember the Sabbath day and we keep it holy. Oh, Father God, we are not in idolatry. We don't have false idols, oh, Father God, that you are the one true and living God. Oh, Father God, we thank you that uh, you gave your, your beloved son so that we could have everlasting life. There's no one like you. Come on, worship him, clap your hands, and give God almighty praise. Hallelujah. Come on, remember, you can clap with the clap your hands. You can lift your hands. You can open your mouth. You can give a shout. You can stump your feet using your whole body to show God how you know how to praise. Now, remember, we are in a uh, first fruits fast. So I just put the PayPal link. Okay. That's part of obedience. We do not want to start the first month in rebellion in a first fruits fast. I know that's hard talk, but the, the walk to be a powerful anointed Christian is a hard walk. So you're either in it, all in, or you're half in, and you get half results. You can do the cash app, dollar sign, donate, a-S-A-M-I, which stands for Abundant Season Anointed Ministries International. Uh, remember all the information regarding the, um, regarding the uh, fast is on uh, the YouTube uh, channel with the video um, First Fruits. And I mean, it is all inclusive. Anything you need to know, if you haven't watched that video, uh, please do. And that's at Abundant Season TV on YouTube. Amen. Uh, let's keep uh, Sister Julie Sutton's family in prayer. Um, if you were on the prayer call a couple of days ago, Thursday night, she lost her sister, uh, I'm sorry, her cousin uh, Rhonda um, uh, to a kidney failure. And she had been fighting. She also got COVID as well, I believe. So please keep her family in prayer. She just got home a week ago after burying her brother in Alabama and eight months ago burying her mother uh, here um, to cancer. So let us uh, pray for the family. So remember tonight, somebody say tonight at seven o'clock, we will have our seventh prayer call and the topic is family and marriages. You know some folks that are struggling in their marriage. You know some folks um, that are having family issues, especially now. Um, you know, kids are having a difficult time not being around their friends. Um, those that are blaming extroverts, meaning that you're used to being around people, may be having a hard time. And we just want to know that Abundant Season Anointed Ministries is here for you. Um, so we're going to um, uh, pray the... Uh, the covenant that we normally pray over our church and it's actually in oh no it's not in this book I'm thinking of the um, the workbook that we have and I don't have it on site but we are thanking God Father God we thank you the master's card account limit some uh, 30 some 60 some 100 a thousand fold Unlimited favor is granted to those who believe every sin in my past and in my future is forgiven. Romans 10, 9, every sickness and disease covered by the blood, every debt covered by the blood, every person who hurts you covered by the blood, every need right now 
is covered by the blood. Have faith and remember it is the Lord thy God that gives you the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. This is our abundant season. Ephesians 3, 20 and Galatians 6, 9. His grace is sufficient. I will love the unlovable, teach the unteachable, forgive the unforgivable, and forget it. Throw it into the sea of forgetfulness to walk in the phenomenal favor of God. You are phenomenal. Now use your master's card today. If you ever need prayer, I'm here for you. Call me 24-7-937-275-3770 or email AbundantSeason at live.com. Uh, you can even post a, a link on the, the Facebook page, Abundant Season Anointed Ministries International, or just the, the page Abundant Season or in the Abundant Season prayer room. Amen. Or post something right now in the feed right now that we're live. God bless you. Keep you. I pray that your fast is going well. I pray that you're getting creative. I pray that you're having suddenly moments. I pray that you're on fire for God. I pray that you give God praise. Now, remember, this is your abundant season. This is Apostle Dr. Robinson, senior pastor. God bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>